In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the custom curve brushes used to create this character. And before we get into too many options, let's go ahead and reacquaint ourselves with the basics of curves. So I'm going to go ahead and isolate just the lower body off this guy. And I'm going to hit B, C to narrow down the curve brushes. And I'm going to grab Curve Strap 3. And I'm just going to draw it on my character. So I'm going to press on my character, drag out a line. And you're going to notice it leaves a curved line behind. And as soon as I let go, it's going to replace that curve with whatever mesh I have loaded. And just like any other curve in any other previous version of ZBrush, if I roll over it, it turns into a blue modifier brush. That's different than the red one. The red one is your brush size. So if I make my brush size, while well, it's red, bigger, by I hit the S key and then drag this to make my brush size bigger or smaller, and then click, it's actually going to make your insert mesh brush bigger or smaller. So if I go out here, make my brush size small, and then click the curve again, it's going to update on the fly. However, when I roll over it and the icon turns blue, this is actually me editing the curve. So I can click, click points on that curve and pull these around. If I want to edit fewer points at a time, while the cursor's blue, hit S, make that smaller, and then you can just edit small points along this line. If I want to edit more, hit S, make it bigger, and you can drag out more points. Uh, let's go ahead and open up a docking station over here. And there's two places where I want to look at curve options. And one of those is the brush menu. I'm going to go ahead and drag that over here. And the stroke menu. I'm going to drag that down here. So under the stroke menu first, let's go ahead and open up the curve, curve functions, and curve modifier menus. And the first thing you can notice is curve mode is turned on for this brush. Uh, let's go ahead and undo all that. Back where we started. So we got our leg here. And if I turn curve mode off, what it's going to do is this object right here, it's going to treat it as a mesh insert brush. So it's just going to insert all these objects, just as if I was to do brush insert cylinder. I'm just going to insert these cylinders. However, let's go ahead and grab our uh, brush curve strap again. With the curve mode turned on, it's going to drag out a curve and take that mesh and duplicate it along that curve. This one's a little bit trickier in that, I'm gonna undo that and we'll go ahead and turn curve mode off again and we'll drag that out. And you turn on polyframe, what it's actually doing is giving you an uh, anchor point, an insertion point, and a duplicate, a duplicate mesh based on polygroups. And we'll get into this later when we make our own. Uh, but just realize that's what it's doing. It's giving you a starting mesh, an ending mesh, and it's along that curve, it's deciding how many times it needs to duplicate this middle mesh in order to fill that curve out. Let's go ahead and undo that, go out of polyframe mode, and we'll turn curve mode back on, and we'll drag this out. Um, we have bend and snap turned on, and what that means is this with bend turned on, you can actually go in here and when the cursor turns blue, you can bend this curve. With snap turned on, it's actually going to snap to the underlying surface. So I can actually, with my blue cursor, I can actually move this uh, curve along the underlying surface. Or I can grab one of these endpoints and slide it along the surface underneath. So let's go ahead and start making our own brushes and we'll get uh, more into the functions of these uh, curve options over here. Now the easiest custom insert curve brush you can make is just taking one of ZBrush's pre-existing insert brushes and applying a curve mode to it. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. I'm going to hit B, I, and let's grab insert sphere. And by default, it's just going to behave as expected. It's going to insert spheres on your object. What we want it to do is actually insert those spheres along a curve. So I'm going to turn on the curve mode and the stroke options. Drag out a line. And it's going to give us a line of spheres. Um, now we have bend on, but we don't have snap on. So if I turn snap on, can actually, with bend on, I can bend the curve and then snap. It'll actually snap to the underlying surface here. And it's inserting those spheres along that curve. Another cool thing you can do, let's go around to the back of the leg here. If I hold down, if I dry out the curve and hold down shift, it's going to give me a ring around this leg and I'm going to let go. It's going to insert a ring of those spheres around his leg. Uh, and again, I can make my brush size bigger out here. Tap on it. It'll update the size of those on the fly as well as if I hit B and then grab another, like say the Curve Strap 3 again, because this is a curve mode brush, when I click on it, it's going to update to that curve brush right there. Um, go back to my brush insert sphere and click it again and go back to the sphere. You'll see right here it seemed to kind of be dipping into my mesh a little bit. So we have snap turned on and it's snapping to the underlying mesh and that's fine, but it's snapping a little bit too far into the mesh. 
One thing you can do is, let's go up to our brush options here, go to your depth, let's go ahead and pull that out a little bit, and then click again. It's actually going to, you're going to see the, that those spheres pop out a little bit more from the surface. So just a couple more ways to control uh, your own custom insert curve brushes. So you can get a lot of good results using the defaults, but the first thing you want to do is probably make your own insert brushes, and it's super simple to do. So let's go ahead and look for an example on my guy. And probably the simplest brush I have on him is this actual vertebrae right here. That's all in a custom insert brush. Let's go ahead and make that really quick. And go out of edit mode, hit control N to clear my canvas. Go to my simple brush. Let's go ahead and draw out a cube 3D. Go into edit mode. Let's go ahead and make it a poly mesh 3D. And using our transpose tool, let's go ahead and shrink this down into kind of a vertebrae shape. And just to get some really quick polygons, what I'm going to do is go over here to Geometry, go down here to DynaMesh, and make this a 64 resolution DynaMesh. So nothing super high resolution, because you got to keep in mind, as you're drawing this out on the surface, it's going to be drawing copies of this. And if it's super high res, it's going to really tax your machine if you know, you're going crazy on the detail. And I don't need this to be that detailed. So turn off Polyframe. We've got our mesh here. We've got uh, Symmetry across the x-axis turned on. And let's make a really quick vertebrae here. Let's go ahead and pull that out. Let's go ahead and inflate these ends here. And spend as much time on this as you want. Make it as pretty as you want. This is about as pretty as I'm going to make it. So the things you need to keep in mind when you want to make an insert brush is your orientation of the brush and what your actual object is going to be. So our object is a vertebrae-esque thing here. And when we draw this insert brush onto the mesh, we want to tell ZBrush how it's going to be drawn. What I mean by that is, what I'm going to do is capture this insert brush based on my camera view. If I look at the mesh from the back, what it's going to do is draw this out as I'm looking at it. And that's not what I want. What I want it to do is actually implant this backside into my object and be looking out at me as I'm doing it. So what I'm going to do is capture this orientation. So again, I can you know tumble around your object to get what you want. If you want to snap to a view, you can hold down shift and snap to that top view here. So I'm looking straight down at the vertebrae and I'm going to hit B to bring up my brush menu. And right here along the bottom, you have this Create Insert Mesh button. Go ahead and hit that. And you're going to notice it threw an Insert Mesh brush right up here with your vertebrae in it. I'm going to hit, uh, go out of Edit Mode, hit Control N. And let's go grab our guy again. Oops. And we'll go ahead and go back in Edit Mode. We'll grab his lower body, isolate that out again. And with this Insert Mesh brush, we're going to drag that out. And again, because I captured that orientation looking straight down on the vertebrae, it's dragging this vertebrae off of the object, so the back is going against the object, and the front of it's coming straight on along that normal of that surface. So I can just insert vertebrae all day long. But I don't want to do that. I actually want to create a line of vertebrae. So what I'm going to do is, of course, just like we did with the spheres, go down to the stroke menu and just simply turn on that curve mode. Now I get to draw out a curve. It's going to have my vertebrae all lined up right along here. Um, looks a little bit weird because they're so far spaced out. How you can control that is this curve step right here. So if I change this to 0.5 and then go update my, uh, my curve here, and you'll see we have bend and snap on, so it's allowing me to edit this curve and as well snap along the surface if I want to. So you're going to see when I typed in 0.5, it actually made them a lot uh, closer spaced. And in fact, if I take, take this down to like say 0.25 and edit my curve, it almost starts looking like a tube. So actually, you can use this to your advantage, um, creating a string of you know complex looking shapes. And then if you want to make a tube out of it, just uh, drop this down, let's say 0.1, and it'll actually make it one continuous mesh that looks like a, you know, kind of pull off a, a cube, or I'm sorry, a tube uh, shape. But we want to make this a vertebrae, so let's go ahead and go back to 0.5. And there you go. There's our vertebrae mesh. And now that we've got a cool brush made, let's go ahead and talk about a little bit more of the functionality of the actual um, curve modifiers. So I'm going to draw out a curve of our vertebrae here. And again, you can grab any of these. And because we have bend and snap on, we can just bend it around, and it'll snap to our surface. Uh, one thing you can actually do is actually you can lock the start and lock the end. Um, the start is this red dot, and the end is the white dot. So if I lock the start over here and grab the end, it'll keep this stationary. And I'm going to pull this around, and I'll keep that locked, and vice versa.
another cool thing you can do let's go ahead and draw out another curve here you can actually let's go ahead and make this bigger actually so again increase my brush size and we're gonna make this vertebrae bigger another thing you can do is increase the uh, size of the object or decrease it by changing the Z intensity so right now the Z intensity is at 100 so this is the actual full object if I drop this down to say 50 and then tap it again it's gonna be half as high drop that down to 13 it's gonna flatten it out even more so you can use that to your advantage to really quickly create different types of objects on the fly um, the only problem with that is when I go to Z intensity of 100 that's as tall as that's gonna get if you want these to really shoot out into space what you can do is under the brush modifiers you can go to the strength multiplier so if I type in 2 into here it's gonna double that uh, strength multiplier on there it's gonna actually shoot them out twice the size and you know you can go oops not the brush modifier strength modif multiplier you can really go crazy with that and get some really interesting effects as well let's go ahead and bring this guy back to normal we'll turn the strength multiplier back to 1 there we go so we've got our normal curve back and Let's talk about a few more things. Let's go make this a little bit smaller. If I want to continue, not dr not grabbing this and uh, dragging it along the surface, if I want to continue this line and make it longer, you'll notice if I go out and come in, you'll see there's this little red line that's attached. As long as that red line's there, I can actually continue drawing this line or this curve and continue updating that curve. Where this line length comes from, let's go back down to the stroke menu, is this curve snap distance. So if I turn that down to, say, 7, I have to get really close to here in order for it to actually pick up. If I increase that to 100, I can get pretty far out and get that little rubber band to show up, and then I can continue that curve. So kind of play with these distances to kind of get something that feels comfortable for you. And you can continue just drawing these curves out. Um, if I want to edit this curve, one thing I can do is I can actually start the curve here. Oh, let's get that you know curve uh, snap going. So I got that little red rubber band coming out. If I draw a curve out here and then connect it back, it'll actually update my curve on the fly. So I can continue uh, making edits to this curve as I go. And of course, this is still bend and snaps turned on, so I can actually go in here and pull these points out as well. So now that you have a pretty good handle on making your own custom insert curve brushes, we'll move on to the tripart insert curve brushes, as well as delving deeper into the functionality found in the brush and stroke menus.